Hey gardeners, Amy here with Garden Up. We have been insanely busy for several weeks, so I have not been able to get a new video edited and uploaded recently. Um, so I wanted to just record a um, raw, unedited, uh, quick video with updates on my huckleberries, our other experiments, and then um, some Q&A for fall. A lot of people have been asking certain questions in various forums that I'm in, and so I want to touch base on some commonly asked questions this time of year. Um, and so, yeah, this is going to be completely raw. I might take out a few of my stutters, but I quite honestly do not have time to edit a video right now. So, without further ado, the huckleberries are doing great for the most part. They're almost all still alive. There are a couple that died. Um, one that I am pretty sure is dead, two that I think are dying, but I'm not sure, one that I thought died and then came back, um, but most of them are still alive. This one's still pretty small, I don't know how well you can see that, let me just adjust that real quick. This one's still pretty small, it's only about three or four inches high, um, which is about the status of most of them, a couple are a little bit bigger, um, but it stayed green all summer and uh, it still has some color and now it's putting on its fall color. Um, <laughs> the hardest part about these, honestly, was keeping them moist enough this summer. Like if you're in the Spokane area, the year's 2021, it got to a, over 110, I don't even know how many times, multiple times over, we peaked over 100 degrees, which is not normal for us here. So trying to keep these watered was the biggest challenge I had, uh, but the mixing the bark into the soil, I saw an instant reaction. Like the plants loved it. They absolutely loved the bark being mixed in. Um, and that also helped hold, hold water a lot, I think, as well. One of the issues I did have that I found was the one that I thought had died it was dying because the water wasn't reaching it. It was hitting my tree and it was getting blocked. So that one spot was still dry. So I adjusted the sprinkler. That uh, huckleberry started getting water regularly and it came right back. So it was, they're, they're quite hardy little buggers, but they are tricky. They, they will tell you if they're not happy. And so I'm really, I'm glad they tell me. Otherwise I would have no idea. Um, so that's my update with those. The other challenges that they've had are my dog. We adopted a Humane Society dog, sweet little shelter dog in February, and he's still learning his boundaries. And this is why I still have fences all over my backyard. It's kind of driving me a little crazy. Um, and he challenges the fences and he's jumped in more than once and dug holes all over here. And he's dug up a couple of the huckleberries a few times. So I'm impressed that they're still alive through that, but um, for the most part, you know, we're working on it. If you have any tips for keeping dogs out of gardens that doesn't involve constant supervision, please let me know in the comments because we're still working on it. <laughs> anyway, so that's that. Um, the last part of it is I am going to cover these for the winter. That was one of the suggestions I read somewhere is for new plants like first and second year plants they'd like to be covered and if you think about where they're native to it makes perfect sense they get buried in pine needles being underbrush plants so of course they would get a little blanket so i'm going to do a couple of things and i'm just going to do it for the camera real quick <clears throat> so i'm going to repurpose some tomato cages i'm pushing them all the way into the ground and my reasoning for doing this has nothing to do with the huckleberries. This is to protect my huckleberries from my dog. This way, uh, I will know where the huckleberries are each buried, or not buried, planted. And hopefully, he won't dig around these. He, he seems to go for, like, easy dig spots. He's not trying to dig up anything in particular. He just digs. So I'm going to wrap some pine needles around each huckleberry and then just kind of sprinkle a few on top like so. And that'll probably be it, at least for now. I'm going to leave it uncovered so it still photosynthesizes. It feels so early to be covering things. Like it's, I want to say September 25th. I really don't know. I've lost track of the days. Um, and I was wearing this long sleeve shirt this morning, but it's noon now and it's way too hot to be wearing this. So I'm like starting to you know, feel it. But 
The first frost date may be as early as October 5th. It's always frosting by October 25th, historically. Uh, some areas out of town have already had frost, so like it's coming. Um, the end of the summer is near and it's time to start covering your plants. I've also filmed a video on um, how to cover different things and I'm hoping to have that up soon. Not sure when. I hope I don't miss the actual time when it's relevant, but it is coming how to cover all kinds of different plants and what I'm covering this year and all those good things. Um, so that's why I'm covering my huckleberries and how I'm doing it. Again, the cage is for the dogs, you know, prevention, not for the huckleberries benefit. Just sprinkle some pine needles over your huckleberries and they'll probably be fine. Um, okay, what's next here? Let's see, the status of other experiments. So uh, the potting soil experiment is nearly finished. I've filmed my take on it already, um, but I wanna get all the way through to the end of the year. So I'm gonna wait until it frosts and then I'll get you know my final pictures and, and post the whole thing. So as soon as it does frost, I'll start working on that video and I'll have that up shortly after that. And the lawn alternative experiment, the um, seeds have arrived, I've ordered them, they're here. But as I just said, October 5th is possibly the first frost date. So you want to sow seeds like grass and lawn alternatives and stuff at least six weeks before the first frost date. So I've kind of missed that deadline already, but um, I'm still gonna do it just to see and I'll save some seeds to re-sow in the spring because they're not all gonna survive. But um, I'm still gonna do it. I'll still post the video and then we'll do some follow-ups in the spring. So stay tuned for that one. It will be coming. I'm just not sure when because we are frantically trying to get all my clients new designs planted before it frosts. They are first, then me. That's how that works. Um, so that's the status of the experiments. Lastly, one more update on us. Uh, Garden Up is hiring. Of course we are. So is every other company in the United States right now. Um, but what we have available are really fun jobs, getting your hands dirty outside, working with flowers and plants. And what we're looking for right now is people who can rake because it's fall cleanup. We've got plantings that we're trying to get done and different projects we're finishing up. And we're looking for help to do that. We wrap up around Thanksgiving usually, uh, depends on the weather. If it doesn't snow much, we might go into December, who knows. Um, but if this is something you'd like to do professionally, check out the job description. I will link uh, my website down in the description below this. And uh, have a look at that. And if the job description sounds good to you, shoot me an email and give me a call. And you know, why not? Can't hurt anything. We are a growing company and we're looking for people to grow with us. Um, we've got a lot of different career opportunities available in future years. so. Check it out. <laughs> a few common questions I'm seeing online. I'm in a lot of different gardening forums on Facebook and other places, and a lot of people post their questions, right? So questions I've seen frequently uh, recently are, when do you plant? When's the best time to plant? Fall is the best time to plant. Right now, you have until the ground freezes. Ready, set, go. Get your plants in, do it now. And once the ground freezes, that's your deadline. You're done. So that's that one. Um, and then grass and lawn seeding. I've already mentioned this a little bit. It's probably a little bit too late to do that right now. Um, you can try it. It may or may not work. You might have to redo it in the spring. So hurry up, get it done. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> one last question I've seen quite a bit floating around the last couple of days is what are all these bugs flying around in the air? all the time and building up on the side of trees. Those are several different species of aphids. Um, so you've got woolly aphids, blue aphids, ash aphids. Some of them are the same, some are different. What they are doing right now is mating and laying their eggs to overwinter. And so they are important forage for the birds, but if you see a tree absolutely coated in aphids, you might want to spray with some soap or some neem oil or something like that just so that your tree is protected and your plants don't have such a bad infestation of aphids next year. 
Um, but just floating around in the air, they're not hurting too much. And like I said, the birds eat them and it's, it's actually important for the environment. So don't just spray just cause. Okay, let's, let's use some um, forethought before we try to kill everything in sight. So, but that's what the bugs are that are floating around right now. <laughs> all right, guys, thanks so much for watching, especially all the way through this far. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful fall. I will see you in the garden.